Hello, 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 YouTube world. It's Miss Patty with For Your CNA. Welcome to our another of our live weekly question and answer sessions where I answer all of your questions on CNA training and testing and workplace and whatever else you want to talk about today. So when you come in, those of you who are new, uh, drop something in the chat for me. Let me know that you're here, a wave, a hi, a hello, or your question, and we'll get to those very, very shortly. Um, for those of you who are new, who don't know how this works, I usually give a little mini lesson first and then we get to your questions toward the end. And at the end of the session, I congratulate all the people that stopped by our channel to let us know that they passed the CNA test this week. So we can all give them a shout out and a congratulations. Hi Jennifer, thanks for joining. Hi Dance, Dance Love Tita, hi. Hi, nice to see you. Okay, so let's get into today's lesson. I'm really kind of excited about this one. Uh, primarily because last year it kind of slipped by me without me even realizing it. So today actually starts the beginning of CNA week. And uh, this is a, a national annual observance. So the second Thursday of every June kicks off CNA week and it runs for a whole week. Um, so this year it's going to run from June 15th, which is today, through the 21st. Um, and it's, I really like this because CNAs are one of the most underappreciated um, healthcare workers. You know, the CNAs are the ones that do all the grunt work. Uh, you know, healthcare wouldn't exist without CNAs, and yet we seem to be not as appreciated as we could be. Now, National Nurses Week was last month in May, and a lot of CNAs um, get a little bit um, frustrated because CNA, or because nurses get a lot of, um, how do I put this? They, they get a lot of recognition for what they do. Um, Nurses seem to be held uh, uh, to a higher standard. They, they seem to be, I'm trying to figure out how to put this, they seem to be more appreciated, more respected in the community. And that really leaves CNAs feeling like, well, wait a minute, what about me? I work really hard too. And if it wasn't for me, the nurses couldn't do the nursing work that they do. And I absolutely agree with you. I get it. And that's why I'm really, really excited to be able to celebrate CNA Week to say that you guys have a whole week too, just like the nurses, because you're just as important. So I really am excited about kicking off CNA Week um, today. And remember, it runs for an entire week. So um, I want to... Today, the lesson, I wanted to kind of focus on CNA week. What is it? When did it start? Why do we have it? And what can I expect? So let's get into this really quick. This is going to be a, a brief lesson, but let's get into this really quick. So CNA week was first recognized in 1977. Um, so this is the 46th year that we have... Um, acknowledged CNA week that we have celebrated you for all of your contributions. So 46 years, that's a long time. Um, I think CNA week gets a whole lot more love than national blueberry pie day, uh, which is a thing. So is, I believe like yesterday or the day before was national strawberry cheesecake day, which is also something really good to celebrate. Um, but I think it's fitting that CNAs have an entire week of celebration, not just a single day, but along those lines, today is also National Career Nursing Assistant Day. Now this is a little bit different. Uh, so this is kind of interesting to me when I was doing the research for this lesson, that there's two different things. There's National CNA Week, and then there's National Career Nursing Assistant Day. And it, that the Career Nursing Assistant Day kicks off Nursing Assistant Week. Um, but believe it or not, these are two different celebrations. And it's really hard to kind of tell the difference, but that career, that word career actually means something. 
So National Career Nursing Assistant Day is designed to recognize those within the CNA industry that have made this their career, that have worked as a CNA long term. And I really want to make sure that we recognize those individuals. Although CNA Week is a wonderful, wonderful thing, those that have uh, devoted their entire career to nursing assistant, you have a very special place uh, in this, this celebration. You get your own day as well as week. So those of you who really have put your heart and your soul and your time and your years into nursing assistant, hats off to you. You are the backbone of healthcare and we do truly appreciate everything that you do for your patients, your facilities, and the nursing industry as a whole. So let's talk about the history of National Nursing Assistant Week. And you know, it's really hard to find history on this particular week of celebration. But from what I was able to find out, you can, you can find pretty much everywhere that the first year it was celebrated was back in 1977, which is a long time ago, 46 years ago. But it's hard to find out the origin story. And from all of the resources that I checked, everybody keeps pointing back to NACA, which is the National Association of Healthcare Assistants. And NACA actually has a whole CNA branch but they are devoted to all healthcare assistants, whether it's medical assistants or an allied health or nursing assistants or home health aides, it's all healthcare assistants. And they do have the CNA branch as well, but it seems from the research that I did that NACA was the one that implemented the very first nursing assistant week. Um, and uh, so hats off to NACA for making that happen. It, there's a lot of work that goes into organizing something like this. Um, so hats off to them. We truly appreciate their dedication to our industry. So every year when NACA um, prepares information for that year's Nursing Assistant Week, they come up with a theme. And every year's theme is a little bit different. And they have promotional materials that kind of revolve around that theme. But I really liked this year's theme. Uh, this year's theme is we're unstoppable. And I really like that because after the last three years that we've been through as nursing assistants, it's, you know, it's tough out there. It's, it's like waging a war. I mean, there's all kinds of issues that we're facing from the pandemic to supply shortages to staffing shortages to um you know increased staffing ratios to the rise of traveling cnas and agency cnas which guys wasn't really a thing you know before the pandemic so the cna landscape is changing and it, it's changing in a lot of different ways and it's really kind of hard to find your footing and because of that, a lot of, of people that were working as CNAs left the industry, furthering the shortage, of course. So recruit, 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 recruit. But um, I really like the message that this sends is those of us that are still standing, we've earned our badge of honor. We are unstoppable. And I love that message. So that's what I want to give to you guys. Those of you that are working, remember the force that you are. Remember that the impact you make. Remember the difference that you provide in the care of the clients that you care for. Remember the impact that you're making on the industry. So I want you to stand up a little bit straighter and I, I want you to really um, be proud of the amazing, wonderful role that you play. So 
CNA week, 46 years old, but I really think that this year we've kind of turned a corner and CNAs really have proven just how valuable they are in the nursing industry, in the healthcare industry at large. And I think that we have a lot to be proud of. Um, those that are currently working in the field. Now, if you are working in the field, make sure that you relay that pride to others in your orbit so we can recruit more people to come in and be CNAs and uh, help reduce this shortage. And that will just ultimately make it easier for you to care for your patients because you'll have fewer patients to take to care for, right? So this was a fun fact. I really thought this was was interesting when I was doing this research. CNA Week was founded in 1977, 14 years before Nurses Week. So CNAs have been acknowledged way longer than nurses. Isn't that interesting? So Nurses Week was actually put in place in 1991. So there, there's a lot of... Um, you know, CNAs often feel a little left out during Nurses Week because it comes first in the calendar. But I kind of like the idea that CNAs have had their own week longer than nurses. Um, so somewhere along the line, a nurse said, wait a minute, hold up. Why do the CNAs get a full week of recognition? What about us? So they kind of trailed behind. So isn't that interesting that CNAs got their own week 14 years before nurses did? So I really like that. Uh, I wanted to bring that fun fact to you. So here's some history on uh, CNAs. And again, th these are just kind of tidbits that I found when I was doing some research for this. But during World War I, it, you know, that the term nursing assistant uh, really wasn't, it, it's kind of a new thing, right? It, it's, um, you know, way before, you know, it, they were just assistants or orderlies or um, candy stripers or helpers or those types of things. But way back in World War One, 1914, really, uh, was when the actual industry was first recognized as being an industry. And what happened was during World War I, they had a whole lot of, of people that needed care. They had um, military people that were injured or sick, but they also had, because a lot of the nurses were were conscripted into the army that left openings at home for um, older patients that you know normally would have a nurse but doesn't have one because the nurses are shipped off to war. So there were openings kind of everywhere and people were looking around going, well, wait a minute, if all the nurses are over there at the war, people have got to, they still need help. So and the nurses that were in the war needed help. So what the Red Cross did is they opened up a volunteer service. So the volunteers, you could come in as a volunteer and they would provide some training to allow you to help with repetitive tasks to free the nurses up to do things that were a little bit more complex that they needed that training. And there was actually a pathway. If you went in as a volunteer and you worked and you learned and you kind of stayed at the bedside while the nurses were working, you actually could be trained to become a nurse. So it was a pathway into nursing. And um, it kind of fell off a little bit in the 30s during the Great Depression. And then when World War II came back, or you know, came about, that program became resurrected. And again, they used this volunteer service to shuttle people into this assistant role on the job training, assistant role. And by the way, it was volunteer at the time, but it gave you a pathway to, to nursing. So that was very, very interesting to me that the first CNA programs were really on the job training but with a pathway into nursing. Like you didn't go become a volunteer and then just didn't not do anything with it. It was, 
you were on your way into nursing. So it wasn't until the 80s, 70s and 80s that nursing assistant actually kind of became a career in itself. And that's why we have National Career Nursing Assistant Day. So it all kind of comes back together. And it was very interesting to me to kind of see the history of where we've come from and where we're going with this and the impact that we're going to make on the future of healthcare as nursing assistants. So we play a very, very vital role, and I'm really excited about the changes that I've seen in the industry and where that could potentially take us moving forward. So what does this mean for you? It's National Nursing Assistant Week. So those of you who are working as nursing assistants, what does that mean to you? Well, it most likely means that you're going to have a pizza party at work. That's kind of the number one way that facilities recognize a nursing assistants because they just don't have a whole lot of ideas on how to recognize your contribution. So pizza parties are very, very prevalent. Um, hey, it's free food, right? And it is nice just to kind of have a little pat on the back and have somebody say, hey, we recognize you. We thank you for your sacrifice and for your diligence and for your professionalism. Here's some pizza. Here's some free food. And a lot of CNAs complain about that. You know, oh, another pizza party. But, you know, I kind of look at this in a little bit different light. They're not doing that for housekeeping. They're not doing that for dietary. They're not doing that for activities. They're doing it for you. They're taking the time to recognize your contribution. And yes, it's with a pizza party, but what other ways could they really acknowledge your diligence, your, your, your impact? It's really hard for an employer to come up with, with something that really shows you how valuable you are, that they can afford, right? Sure, a check would certainly go a long way, right? Give me more money, give me more money, but that's not always feasible. Um, nursing homes, hospitals, assisted living facilities, they're operating on very thin margins right now, especially because of the nursing shortage. So it's, it, they have to kind of balance what they can financially afford with um, how, you know, finding something that will actually make you feel appreciated. So some places go a little bit beyond the pizza party, this is a good thing, and they'll give gift bags or t-shirts or maybe even gift certificates for something that can be useful for you. And those are really nice gestures. Um, you know, I, I think that... Um, Basically, I, I think that any recognition is a good thing, but, you know, those facilities that put a little bit more time and thought and effort into it, they're going to get a few more points, certainly. Um, so let me ask you, those of you who are working in healthcare, for CNA Week, what kind of things have you uh, received for recognition of being a CNA? What kind of things would you like to receive? Sure, pizza parties, free food, that's, that's great. But what are some things that you would like to see other than a check? Yes, I know, everybody wants the check. But other than a check, what are some things that would make you feel appreciated? Now, this is important. If you've got some ideas, speak up, chime in. Because employers are looking for the kinds of things that you would like to receive. They need ideas. So even though this is the start of nursing week, um, if you give them some ideas, maybe they could put something together for you. If not this year, maybe next year. So get those, those thought processes going. Um, instead of complaining, oh my gosh, we're getting another pizza party, start thinking about things that you would like to receive. What are some things that would make you feel appreciated? Um, and drop those in the comments. So, oh, Jennifer, good job. So Jennifer says we're going to have something every day at work for the week. Free lunch, t-shirts, etc. I love it. I absolutely love that. So think about some things that you would like. Drop them in the comments. And that way, hopefully, employers that watch this later, they'll get some really good ideas and maybe be able to appreciate you in a way that makes you feel 
appreciated. So one of the places that I worked uh, made up these little candy bags one time, and it was so cute because they put lifesavers because you're a lifesaver. And everything that was in there was um, kind of a pun for uh, nursing assistants. And it was really cute and um, really sweet, the, the amount of thought that went into that. So think about some things that you would like. Now, because it is CNA week and because I'm all about CNAs, <laughs> um, I mean, it's in the name, right? For your CNA, I'm all about the CNAs. We're going to give you a gift as well. So in a, um, an effort to show our appreciation to you, we are going to be offering the CNA card games at $10. And guys, this is lower than my cost. I'm actually, um, I'm, this is this truly is a gift. So ten dollars plus shipping. You can use the code CNA Week twenty twenty three to activate that. But the code isn't valid yet. You've got to, My website is having some issues right now. So I'll be able to create the coupon code. Try this evening or tomorrow. Um, but CNA Week twenty twenty three will get you that card game for ten dollars. Okay, um, and that. Uh, it, it's a really fun way to um, celebrate being a CNA. It's recreational, it's fun, but you can play it with people at home that have no medical training at all, and it might be enough to capture their interest, so maybe you could recruit them to become a CNA. Now, outside of the card game and us, there are other places that you might be able to get uh, recognition. So, for instance, your local scrub shops may have something for CNA week, a special sale, maybe gift bags, um, some sort of acknowledgement. Some places are giving away badge holders. There's all kinds of um, ways that the community can celebrate CNA week beyond your employer. So make sure you're looking around your community to see, is there anything there that you might be able to benefit from outside of work. Now in my community where I am, which is Spring Hill, Florida, I own a retail store. So a uniform store, a scrub shop. So for us, we're, we actually made up gift bags for CNAs in our local community. So the first 50 CNAs to come in during this week will get a gift bag. Now, um, this really isn't going to be benefit most of you because most of you are not in my geographic area. But if anybody is and you're a CNA, come into Loose Ends Medi Scrubs and we have a gift bag for you. We got all kinds of cool goodies in there to help celebrate the fact that this is your week and we truly appreciate you. So if you're in my geographic area, um, come in sometime this week. Let us know you're a CNA and we have a gift bag for you. If you're not in our geographic area, check with your local scrub shops because they may be offering something similar as well. So um, whether it's a discount um, or a gift bag or a free something, uh, take a look around because you might be able to benefit from something in your local community as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed that presentation on... Uh, CNA week. So let's see who's here. Uh, hey, Blue. Jessica, hi. Jennifer says, so a nurse told me that diabetics are prone to infection in their feet because of poor circulation. What does poor circulation have to do with fighting off infections? Oh, Jennifer, that's a great question. So I have a whole lesson on this um, in, in my classroom lectures. If you go watch Foot Care, the lecture for Foot Care, um, I'll talk about that. But really briefly to explain this in, in kind of a short, condensed version. Okay, so when you take in carbs, carbs break down into sugar and the sugar circulates in your bloodstream. And that's how sugar gets to all the cells. Because cells in your body run on sugar. That's the fuel for, for your cells. So the sugar circulates in your blood system. Your blood, uh, your blood system is a transportation that gets the sugar to the cells, right? Well, when we have too many 
sugar molecules in our blood. Our blood sugar is elevated and we don't have enough insulin. Well, insulin is the key that opens the cells to allow the sugar to go in. So when you're diabetic and you take in carbs and it breaks down into sugar and the sugar goes in the bloodstream, ideally that sugar should be able to go into the cells, but it needs that key to make it happen. The key is insulin. Since there isn't much insulin because of diabetes, diabetes in, um, interrupts the production of insulin, now you've got sugar in your bloodstream that doesn't have anywhere to go. Now sugar isn't excreted from the body very efficiently. So that means that whatever sugar you have on board is on board. We gotta do something with it. We can't get rid of it. So what we do is package it up in fat cells and store it. So that sugar becomes glycogen stored in fat cells for future use. And it's a very efficient system as long as you have insulin. Without insulin, if we do break down those fat cells, that glycogen isn't really usable. So what we end up with, and like I said, this is a very short, condensed version of this problem, but what we end up with is a lot of excess sugar in the bloodstream that either has to be used by the cells if we have insulin or stored in fat cells if we don't. But eventually the fat cells get full up and there aren't any other places to store this blood sugar. So these sugar molecules whiz round and round and round and round and round and round your system. And it doesn't have anywhere to go. Over time, those sugar molecules, which are heavy, by the way, and kind of sharp and jagged. You've seen crystals under microscopes, right? It's kind of sharp and jagged. So these heavy crystals tend to settle on the inside of your arteries. Now, because they're kind of sharp and jagged and all these little sharp pieces sticking up, that's going to... Um, catch things that are going by, like cholesterol, which looks like pizza cheese in your arteries. It's also going to shred cells as they go by and um, catch uh, fibrinogen and, and platelets and other things that your body needs to circulate. So we have these excess sugar crystal crystals that are adhering to the inside of your arteries that will catch other things as they float by. So eventually you get this big, sticky, gooey, hard mess on the inside of your arteries, which means that good blood flow isn't going to be able to get around it very effectively. Now there's two places in the body that this is going to happen the most, and it's all because of gravity, because sugar crystals are heavy. So they're going to get pulled down to the lowest points of our body like our feet, and the lowest points of our upper body, like our hands. So when we have injuries as a diabetic on our feet and our hands, we're probably not going to get good blood flow to those areas to be able to heal the, um, the injury very effectively. So that's why when you have diabetes, you are prone to injury, because you may not feel an injury when it happens, because those sugar molecules coat nerves as well. You're, you may not feel the injury, and you're gonna have a hard time healing the injury, because the good blood just can't get past all of those obstructions. That's why we end up with poor circulation, poor healing. And that, incidentally, is why we do foot care, is to look for any problems before they become big problems because your patient may not know that there's a problem. Hi, Wangui. Hi, Hina. Uh, hey, Jess. Kay says, I was supposed to leave class with my certificate in my OFC, but not because June's schedule is full, so hopefully I'll get my exam date the first week of next month. Okay, we're, we'll uh, send good vibes out your way. We'll hope for the best for you. Lou says, I hate how some medical professionals like doctors, ARNPs, often treat a CNA as if they're stupid. True, a CNA doesn't have the medical knowledge of the RN, but they aren't stupid either. Absolutely, Blue. I completely agree, to, agree with you. The sad reality is that nurses only spend, in a 12-hour shift, only spend about four minutes with each patient. Four minutes out of a 12-hour shift. Doctors spend even less 
about 90 seconds in all actuality. So chances are the doctor is not going to pick up on a change in the patient. And the nurse is probably not going to pick up on the change either, simply because they don't see them enough. They aren't spending enough time with those patients to notice any changes. But do you know who does? The CNAs. CNAs answer call lights. CNAs help patients to the bathroom. CNAs help feed patients. They help with bathing and dressing and grooming and mobility. And you're with the patient all the time. So you start to notice when an odor shows up or when the patient's a little bit slower today than they normally are or when the patient just isn't eating like they used to be or when the patient isn't urinating the way they, they usually do, or they're urinating way more, you start to notice changes in the patient. And when you relay those changes to the nurse, it triggers something that says, oh wait, there might be a problem, let me go in and see what's going on with the patient. So we really are the first line of defense as CNAs. And nurses that don't listen to their CNAs do so at their own peril because the CNA really does have that insider information that that nurse needs to know what to assess next. So higher um, degreed individuals like nurses or doctors would do well to listen to the observations that the CNAs make. Now I know that some of them don't, but that's a bad practice. Uh, CNA should be listened to. Absolutely. Oh, thank you, Marie. I appreciate that. Hi, Kathy Ann. Blue says, a physician assistant I work with told me that in his day, late 60s, as a CNA, the background check process was, do you pinky swear not to steal grandma's pain meds? <laughs> yes. And asking your buddy if you show up to your shifts on time. Yeah, I agree, Blue. Yeah, there, there was very, very little oversight, very little um, background. But the problem was that there were some bad people that got through. And that took advantage of patients and abused patients and their medications and their money. And it still happens today. Even with background checks, it still happens. And we were able to kind of... Uh, prevent some people from getting into the industry, but there's still some that get through that do truly awful, awful things. But that's not limited to just CNAs. There's some truly awful nurses and there's some doctors out there that take advantage of patients as well. So it's not limited just to CNAs, but yes, the background check uh, process has improved over time and it's all basically to keep grandma safe. <laughs> Uh, hi, Jasmine. Happy CNA week to you as well. Jennifer, let's see here. Uh, Blue said, okay, so Jennifer says something every day at work. Blue says where I work at, gift cards, tickets to the zoo, gift bags. Ooh, I like that. Tickets to the zoo. I like experiences. I think experiences are um, super important. Uh, not just gifts, but experiences. I really like that. My granddaughter's turning seven in a couple weeks. Unbelievable, right? Seven, and her mom is taking her out of state to a <coughs> aquarium um, as a whole experience as her birthday gift. I think that that's fantastic. I think it's awesome. Let's see here. Raffles, that includes free pass, no questions asked. I want two days off with time and a half pay. Good for one time with two weeks notice. Oh, that's an awesome gift. Wow. You know, one of the, the, the things that I hear from CNAs most often that is a really good indicator of a good workplace versus a not so good workplace is the ability to live your life outside of work. So having an employer that truly understands that life exists beyond the walls of their facility. Now I get it, we have to have staffing to take care of our patients. I understand that 100%. But when you tell your staff members, I don't care what you have going on outside, you have to be here on Thursday, that really isn't the sign of a good employer. That If they're not responsive to your needs, you can't be, be, be responsive to your client's needs, your patient's needs. So Blue, the fact that, that you have this, that this exists, that somebody has this 
you know, ticket and can say, I need two days off. It doesn't matter what the schedule said. I Here's two weeks notice. I need these two days off. And that gets acknowledged. That's amazing. You guys are doing a fantastic job. Hats off to you guys. That's amazing. Uh, Marcella, hi from Denver. Adancia, hi. D says, I'm taking my exam soon. I have crippling performance anxiety. It's not something I can fake it till I make it. I'm worried that I'm going to be judged unfairly and docked points due to my noticeable anxiety. Oh, D, that's heartbreaking. I get it. Um, we were a testing center for a long time, and people would be out in the parking lot throwing up. Uh, because of their anxiety. I mean, it happens. People get anxious. The evaluators know that. They're not going to judge you unfairly based on your anxiety. There's a lot of people out there with serious performance anxiety. They get that. But here's the one thing that I do want to relay to you because I think it's important. I get that you have performance anxiety and I'm not going to tell you just push through it because I know that it can be crippling. I, I get that. But the real problem isn't on test day. The real problem is that after you test and you become certified, when you get out in the workplace, observation of your skills does not stop. In fact, it probably gets worse. Because if you think those evaluators are intrusive, watching your every move, family members are way worse. Family members don't understand why you're doing certain things the way you're doing them, and they get really judgy So because they don't have the understanding behind it. So while I get that you are, you know, stressing the test seriously, and I, I do understand that, I want you to think about working on strategies beyond the test when you're in the workplace because that is, um, oversight isn't going to end at the test. And a lot of people, they, they, can, they, they have performance anxiety. They kind of get through the test, but then they get in the workplace and they don't even realize that, oh my gosh, people are watching what I do. I didn't, I, I didn't realize this. So if you start working on strategies now before you get there, it'll help take care of the test, but it will also help you in a workplace as well. So the one thing that I tell my students overwhelmingly, we just started a class this week, so you might want to go back and watch my classroom replays for Monday and Wednesday because I talk a little bit about this. The one thing that I want to get through to you is that when you're testing, it's not about you ever. It's about the patient. Those evaluators, when they're watching you, they're actually watching the patient. So how are you uh, relating to the patient? What information are you giving them? How are you treating them? Are you uh, leaving them safely in the middle of the bed? Or are they too near the edge where they can fall off? Are you explaining what you're doing so that the patient can feel like they're a partner, not a prisoner? Are you um, addressing their privacy needs? Are you uh, making them feel like you want to be there? Or are you like rushing out of the room when you're done? These are the things that they're focusing on. And if you can somehow in your mind make that switch where you're focusing on the patient and not on you during the test, you'll actually perform better and your anxiety tends to get reduced a little bit because now you're focusing on the right place. You're focusing on the patient. So what I tell people is think of your very favorite family member, whoever it is that you absolutely love in your family and that you really would like somebody to take super care of. And I want you to imagine that person in the bed and that's who you're going to talk to. So is it your aunt? Is it your grandpa? Is it your cousin? So think of your very favorite family member. Imagine them in the bed and what would you say to them? How would you treat them? And if you do that and you if you can do that for the test, and I know anxiety is really, really hard to get over. I get it. But if you practice with this mentality, you'll do much better on the test. But it also will naturally kind of relieve some of that anxiety because you're focusing on something outside yourself. So I hope that helps. Good luck. We're going to send you good vibes. Uh, hi, Tessie. 
Blue says, oh, hold on, I'm going to sneeze. Blue says, I've told doctors to take a chill pill and listen to the HCA CNA. The CNA is the one dealing with family members. If you want dirt on the family drama, <laughs> oh, man, I could tell you some drama. I have been in home care situations and facility situations. I have seen some drama. Absolutely. That's who knows it all. Absolutely. Um, if you want to know why grandma's blood sugar is 300 every day, ask the HCA about what grandma really drinks at lunch. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, patients will lie. Patients will lie, 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 lie. <laughs> Your CNAs will tell you the truth. Uh, Lauren says, hi, Miss Patty. Passed my CNA written in clinicals thanks to you and will be starting my first job in healthcare soon as a PCT. So grateful for your channel. We will continue to stay in and stay informed. Thank you so much, Lauren. Congratulations to you. Great, uh, great job. We are so incredibly proud of you. That reminds me, I had somebody call me and this just, um, I actually cried when I got the phone with this person. So we had somebody that um, called me up and said that she had taken my online course four years ago. And um, she passed the, the CNA test with flying colors, went on, and she called to let me know. I was the first person she called. She called to let me know that she had just passed the, the NCLEX for registered nurse. So she took our CNA class, became a CNA, went to nursing school, became a, a, an RN, and had just passed her NCLEX, and I am the person that she called. And she said that everything that, that was taught to her in the online program was relevant in the, the RN training, and that she had such an easier time with the skills and relating to patients and everything because of what she was taught in the online program that it, it that what she learned as a CNA went in you know went way beyond just CNA it actually applied to her nursing training and she was telling other students about our training and the lessons that that she had learned with us and that just absolutely I, I can't tell you what that did for me um, to know that we were part of that journey and that because of this, there's another fantastic nurse at the bedside that's going to take you guys seriously because they were there. So I just, I absolutely love that. So keep those testimonials coming. Guys, you don't know. That keeps me motivated. There are lots of days that I sit here behind this computer and just want to cry because things aren't going well. You know, uh, my website is down. I'm having technical issues. The um, I'm pulled in 14 different directions. And, you know, I mean, th there are days that just like everybody else, right, I get kind of pulled down, too, by the weight of everything that I'm dealing with. So for me to have your um, your your stories, you have no idea what that does to help lift me up. And that's why we do what we do, because I want to make sure that there's somebody in your corner lifting you up on those bad days. And that's why we show up every Thursday, because I want to be that person for you. So keep your testimonials coming. You have no idea how much they help. So congratulations, Lauren. Um, Patricia says, I love experiences too. You can't beat it. Uh, happy to catch you live. Awesome. All right, guys, you have been fantastic today. Fantastic. So we're going to get to my favorite part. And I don't have very many people to congratulate today. Now, I don't know if it was just a slow testing week or if you guys aren't letting me know when you pass a state exam. But if you do, if you come back and drop me a note on any one of my videos, just drop me a fresh comment and let me know that you pass a state exam, we want to give you guys a shout out. We want the whole world to celebrate you and your accomplishments. So this week, we're going to celebrate Ket's Diamond Touch. Congratulations on passing the CNA state exam. And Quan is testing soon. So we're going to send out some good vibes to Quan so that they do fantastic. Again, we're going to make sure that D has some good vibes as well and can overcome that anxiety. I know how crippling that can be. So we're going to keep you in our thoughts. Faith passed the state exam on Monday. Congratulations, Faith. Oh, that's amazing. I love to congratulate brand new CNAs. Um, so welcome to the wonderful world of healthcare. I'm so glad you guys made us part of your journey. Um, so, okay, 
I guess that's going to be it for today. Make sure you catch us on Tuesday. Tuesday we're doing our game show. So we're actually giving away first place. You get the card game and a badge holder. Second place, you get a badge holder. Both of them get free scrub caps. And uh, whatever else goodies I've got laying around that I can send you guys for uh, scoring first and second in the game show. So that'll be Tuesday at 11 on our YouTube channel. Make sure you join us. It's interactive, it's live, and it's a great way to practice for the state exam. So I hope to see you there. Of course, we'll be back next Thursday with another live question and answer session, just like today. And I have class on Monday and Wednesday of next week as well. So busy week for us. I'm going to go live four times next week. Hope you can join us for at least one of them. So, okay, until next time, guys, happy caregiving. Bye.